You shall make an altar to burn incense upon. Of acacia wood shall you make it. A cubit shall be its length, and a cubit its breadth. It shall be square, and two cubits shall be its height. Its horns shall be of one piece with it. And ye shall overlay it with pure gold, its top and its sides round about and its horns. And ye shall make for it a molding of gold round about. And two gold rings shall you make for it. Under its molding, on two opposite sides of it, shall you make them, and they shall be holders for poles with which to carry it. Ye shall make the poles of acacia wood, and overlay them with gold. And ye shall put it before the veil that is by the ark of the covenant, before the mercy seat that is over the covenant, where I will meet with you. And Aaron shall burn fragrant incense on it. Every morning when he dresses the lamps, he shall burn it. And when Aaron sets up the lamps in the evening, he shall burn it, a perpetual incense before the Lord throughout your generations. You shall offer no unholy incense thereon, nor burnt offering, nor cereal offering, and you shall pour no libation thereon. Aaron shall make atonement upon its horns once a year. With the blood of the sin offering of atonement, he shall make atonement for it once in the year throughout your generations. It is most holy to the Lord. The Lord said to Moses, When you take the census of the sons of Israel, then each shall give a ransom for himself to the Lord when you number them, that there be no plague among them when you number them. Each who was numbered in the census shall give this, half a shekel according to the shekel of the sanctuary. The shekel is twenty giras, half a shekel as an offering to the Lord. Everyone who is numbered in the census from twenty years old and upward shall give the Lord's offering. The rich shall not give more, and the poor shall not give less than half the shekel when you give the Lord's offering to make atonement for yourselves. And you shall take the atonement money from the sons of Israel, and shall appoint it for the service of the tent of meeting, that it may bring the sons of Israel to remembrance before the Lord, so as to make atonement for yourselves. The Lord said to Moses, You shall also make a lever of bronze with its base of bronze for washing. And you shall put it between the tent of meeting and the altar, and you shall put water in it, with which Aaron and his sons shall wash their hands and their feet. When they go into the tent of meeting, or when they come near the altar to minister, to burn an offering by fire to the Lord, they shall wash with water, lest they die. They shall wash their hands and their feet, lest they die. It shall be a statute forever to them, even to him and to his descendants throughout their generations. Moreover, the Lord said to Moses, Take the finest spices of liquid myrrh, five hundred shekels, and of sweet-smelling cinnamon half as much, that is, two hundred and fifty, and of aromatic cane, two hundred and fifty, and of cassia, five hundred, according to the shekel of the sanctuary, and of olive, a hin. And ye shall make of these a sacred anointing oil, blended as by the perfumer. A holy anointing oil it shall be. And you shall anoint with it the tent of meeting, and the ark of the covenant, and the table, and all its utensils, and the lampstand, and its utensils, and all the altar of incense, and the altar of burnt offering, with all its utensils, and the laver, and its base. You shall consecrate them, that they may be most holy. Whatever touches them will become holy. And you shall anoint Aaron and his sons, and consecrate them, that they may serve me as priests. And you shall say to the sons of Israel, This shall be my holy anointing oil throughout your generations. It shall not be poured upon the bodies of ordinary men, and you shall make no other like it in composition. It is holy, and it shall be holy to you. Whoever compounds any like it, or whoever puts any of it on an outsider, shall be cut off from his people. And the Lord said to Moses, Take sweet spices, stacti, and onica, and galbanum, sweet spices, with pure frankincense, of each shall there be an equal part, and make an incense blended, as by the perfumer, seasoned with salt, pure and holy, and you shall beat some of it very small, and put part of it before the covenant in the tent of meeting, where I shall meet with you. It shall be for you most holy. And the incense, which you shall make according to its composition, you shall not make for yourselves. It shall be for you holy to the Lord. 
Whoever makes any like it to use as perfume shall be cut off from his people. The Lord said to Moses, See, I have called by name Bezalel, the son of Uri, son of Hur, of the tribe of Judah. And I have filled him with the Spirit of God, and ability, and intelligence, with knowledge and all craftsmanship, to devise artistic designs, to work in gold, silver, and bronze, in cutting stones for setting, and in carving wood, for work in every craft. And behold, I have appointed with him Aholiab, the son of Ahisamach, of the tribe of Dan, and I have given to all able men ability, that they may make all that I have commanded you, the tent of meeting, and the ark of the covenant, and the mercy seat that is thereon, and all the furnishings of the tent, the table and its utensils, and the pure lampstand with all its utensils, and the altar of incense, and the altar of burnt offering, with all its utensils, and the laver and its base, and the finely worked garments, the holy garments for Aaron, the priest, and the garments of his sons, for their service as priests, and the anointing oil, and the fragrant incense for the holy place. According to all that I have commanded you, they shall do. And the Lord said to Moses, Say to the sons of Israel, You shall keep my Sabbaths, for this is a sign between me and you throughout your generations, that you may know that I, the Lord, sanctify you. You shall keep the Sabbath, because it is holy for you. Everyone who profanes it shall be put to death. Whoever does any work on it, that soul shall be cut off from among his people. Six days shall work be done, but the seventh day is a Sabbath of solemn rest, holy to the Lord. Whoever does any work on the Sabbath day shall be put to death. Therefore the sons of Israel shall keep the Sabbath, observing the Sabbath throughout their generations, as a perpetual covenant. It is a sign forever between me and the sons of Israel, that in six days the Lord made heaven and earth, and on the seventh day he rested and was refreshed. And he gave to Moses, when he had made an end of speaking with him upon Mount Sinai, the two tables of the covenant, tables of stone, written with the finger of God. Rejoice in the Lord, O you righteous! Praise befits the upright. Praise the Lord with the lyre. Make melody to him with the harp of ten strings. Sing to him a new song. Play skillfully on the strings with loud shouts. For the word of the Lord is upright, and all his work is done in faithfulness. He loves righteousness and justice. The earth is full of the mercy of the Lord. By the word of the Lord the heavens were made, and all their host by the breath of his mouth. He gathered the waters of the sea as in a bottle. He put the deeps in storehouses. Let all the earth fear the Lord. Let all the inhabitants of the world stand in awe of him. For he spoke, and it came to be. He commanded, and it stood forth. The Lord brings the counsel of the nations to naught. He frustrates the plans of the peoples. The counsel of the Lord stands forever. The thoughts of his heart to all generations. Blessed is the nation whose God is the Lord, the people whom he has chosen as his heritage. The Lord looks down from heaven. He sees all the sons of men. From where he sits enthroned, he looks forth on all the inhabitants of the earth. He who fashions the hearts of them all and observes all their deeds. A king is not saved by his great army. A warrior is not delivered by his great strength. The war horse is a vain hope for victory and by its great might it cannot save. Behold, the eye of the Lord is on those who fear him, on those who hope in his merciful love, that, they may, that he may deliver their soul from death, and keep them alive in famine. Our soul waits for the Lord. He is our help and shield. Yes, our heart is glad in him, because we trust in his holy name. Let your mercy, O Lord, be upon us, even as we hope in you. O Jerusalem, Jerusalem, killing the prophets and stoning those who are sent to you, how often would I have gathered your children together as a hen gathers her brood under her wings, and you would not. Behold, your house is forsaken and desolate, for I tell you, you will not see me again until you say, Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Jesus left the temple and was going away when his disciples came to point out to him the buildings of the temple. But he answered them, 
You see all these, do you not? Truly, I say to you, there will not be left here one stone upon another that will not be thrown down. As he sat on the Mount of Olives, the disciples came to him privately, saying, Tell us when this will be, and what will be the sign of your coming, and of the close of the age. And Jesus answered them, Take heed that no one leads you astray, for many will come in my name, saying, I am the Christ, and they will lead you astray. And you will hear of wars and rumors of wars. See that you are not alarmed, for this must take place, but the end is not yet. For nation will rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom. And there will be famines and earthquakes in various places. All this is but the beginning of the sufferings. Then they will deliver you up to tribulation, and put you to death. And you will be hated by all nations for my name's sake. And then many will fall away, and betray one another, and hate one another. And many false prophets will arise and lead many astray. And because wickedness is multiplied, most men's love will grow cold, but he who endures to the end will be saved, and this gospel of the kingdom will be preached throughout the whole world as a testimony to all nations, and then the end will come. We are so busy working to perfect our lives and take care of necessities that God gives us a weekly day of rest so we can keep our priorities in order. The Sabbath is a strong reminder that something, or rather someone, should take precedence in our lives. The psalmist reminds us that the war horse is a vain hope for victory. He might as well have said the bank account or the military or career success. While these things are important in their place, final victory rests in the Lord's hands alone. That is why the psalm's message stands out. Our soul waits for the Lord. He is our help and shield. In the end, he alone is what will satisfy. In today's gospel passage, Jesus forecasts the temple's downfall and destruction. There will not be left here one stone upon another. Indeed, the Roman army destroyed the temple in 70 AD. The temple was temporary, intended to point to God's ultimate desire to dwell amongst his people, to indwell in their very souls, and to bring them to an eternal Sabbath rest in heaven. What can you do this Sunday to keep holy the Lord's day and make God and heaven your first priority?